matching twins. Oh, you should have got it. Hi. Only twice. Yes. Two more. Um, was there any conflict like after people were throwing grass? Um, there were. There was like even a nursery for um, parents that didn't. My name is Jane Adams, and today I'm here to help you understand what I do and what I stand for. So first, I'll talk a little bit about me. I was born September 6, 1860, and one day my father said we're going on a trip. I was around eight, and I was so adventurous. Me and my brother would sneak out. <laughs> Once I lowered him over a cliff to spy on a baby owl. Now, I loved to read, and I guess it's because books were full of adventures I would get trapped in the books. And girls didn't go to college much in 1881, but my father believed I could, and so I did. And I graduated at the top of my class. So, after college, I didn't know what to do with my life. I, my, that same summer, my father died. And I didn't know what to do about that. So it made a catch up. And two years later, me and my friends went to London. There were so many beautiful things there. Then I saw something I would never forget. There were people begging for the market's oh. leftover rotten fruit. There was a lot of unemployment and poverty in London and in the United States as well. A couple years later, I told my friend Ellen Gate Starr what I had planned to do. I would make a settlement home like the one I saw in London. In Chicago, there, been, there was the nice side of town, with the nice lakes, the fancy shops, and mansions. There was also the not so nice side. I found the perfect house. It was right in the middle of the worst streets. Garbage piles of pie, large family and tiny large families and tiny houses with no running water. Rough boys were starting up trouble because they had nothing to do. It smelled so bad. The house was owned by Charles J. Hall, but handed down to a cousin, Helen Culver. Now, first I was paying rent, but then when I told Helen what I had planned to do with the house, she gave me the house for free. I was so thankful. That's why I named it Hall House. Now, the first night I was so busy and excited that I forgot to lock a side door. And surprisingly, nobody broke in. That's when I decided I would leave my house open so people could come in always. So people that didn't have anything to do or anything could come to Hall House. Now, it wasn't always peaceful. Once some boys were throwing rocks at the house and broke a window, then I went said to myself, I need to give them the kids something to do. And so there was a park that they were about to tear down. And I said, don't tear it down. And so I bought the park. And now the kids have a great time. Playing. My friends and people say I have my own way of seeing things. Yeah. <laughs> I would pay my own money for a whole house and told well-off people to donate to. That means clothes I would even hand down. My friends would tease me about this. Once they gave me a pair of underwear with my initials on them. But I still passed them down. Any problem, I tried to find a way to get rid of. So that's my life, and that's Hall House. Hope you liked what I said, and what I do, and what I did. Any questions? I always did really like space ever since I was little. It was July 20th, 1969, when the eagle landed on the moon. I was so excited to watch Neil Armstrong come down the ladder and be the first person to step on the moon. My name is Sally Ride. You know, I was always athletic. I loved tennis for a while. I even thought I was going to be a tennis professional. But after seeing Neil Armstrong, that's when I decided to study astrophysics. It was very difficult to get my degree. Times are changing, and NASA was beginning to take some women into the astronaut training program. The competition was very stiff. There are 8,000 people that applied for only a few positions. I was thrilled I was going to be one of the astronauts that went up into space. I learned what it was like to be weightless. I, that felt really astonishing. Some other things I had to train for was parachute jumping and water survival. I did really love all the training. My role was going to be very important. I was going to be a mission specialist, which means I was going to take control of the robotic arm which releases satellites into space. 
Before the takeoff, I attended a press conference. Because I was a woman, I was asked the most silliest things like, would you cry if there was a malfunction? And what kind of makeup are you taking up? Of course, I was too well trained to, to worry about such silly things. The takeoff was breathtaking. I was anxious, nervous, excited, as well as shocked that I was actually going up into space. After landing, I continued to work at NASA. The Challenger was scheduled up to go into space one more time. Sadly, on January 28, 1986, the Challenger was scheduled to go up into, uh, into space one more time. After only 75 seconds, the Challenger blew up, killing all seven astronauts. I was part of the team who had to investigate what had caused the terrible accident. After long, hard days, we figured out it was a crack in the O-ring. After all that, right now I'm working on a new thing called Sally Ride Science, which is a program to motivate boys and girls, mostly girls, to not be afraid to try anything. I am Sally Ride, the first American woman in space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.